Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about quadratic functions. We'll start off with some main ideas. Quadratic functions, also called parabolas, look this way on a graph. They look like these open u's that go up or down for forever. And these are pretty much the only two shapes that you can get with a parabola. When the arrows are pointed upward, you say it's concave up, and when the arrows are pointed downward, you say it's concave down. Other textbooks or professors might use different terminologies, but for this video, we'll use concave up and concave down. So now we have a goal of classifying quadratic functions. We do this by first examining x-intercepts, which will be the points at which we cross the x-axis, and these points will have some number in the x-coordinate and a zero in the y-coordinate. We also might look for y-intercepts, the points at which we're crossing the y-axis. These points will have a zero in the x-coordinate and a number in the y-coordinate. And then something new will be this thing called the vertex. The vertex is our lowest point if we're looking at a concave up parabola, or our highest point if we're looking at a concave down parabola. Vertices, which is the plural of vertex, are often denoted by points h, k. To describe quadratic functions mathematically, we have two forms. The first is called the standard form, which looks like f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to zero. So basically, a quadratic function is a polynomial function of degree two. Now normally the standard form doesn't give you much information right off the bat, but it does tell us if our parabola is concave up or concave down. If a is a positive number, then you're concave up, and if a is a negative number, then you're concave down. The second form of quadratic functions is called vertex form which looks like f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k, and this just makes reading off the vertex much easier. Notice that there is a negative installed into the formula next to h, so the vertex in terms of its ordered pair is always the opposite sign of how it's written in vertex form. For instance, if my vertex form had x minus 2 squared, then my vertex in the x-coordinate would have positive 2 as the x-coordinate. Notice that the a is still preserved, because this is the same a that would come from standard form, so if a is positive, I'm concave up, and if a is negative, then I'm concave down. The things that we'll do in this video is learning how to convert from one form to another, and also learning how to graph parabolas. And basically, these graphs are going to have some necessary information, but it's not going to be terribly detailed. Essentially, every time we graph something, it's an approximate sketch, not necessarily a perfect picture, but that's okay. For this first slide, what we'll do is convert standard form quadratic functions into vertex form quadratic functions. And now the only thing you need to know going in is how to complete the square of a quadratic. If you don't know how to do that, I have a previous video on this topic. But at the moment, I'm going to assume that you know how to complete the square of a quadratic. So moving forward, I'll take x squared plus 4x plus 3 and write it as x squared plus 4x plus 3 plus 4 minus 4 which will then, after a few steps, simplify to x plus 2 quantity squared minus 1. So all we've done here is just change the way that this quadratic is written, without actually changing the value of anything. So I've gone from standard form, x squared plus 4x plus 3, to vertex form, x plus 2 squared minus 1. Therefore, I can read off the vertex, which will be negative 2, negative 1. Remember that I have to change the sign for the h-coordinate, and I have to leave the sign the same, for the y-coordinate. That's why x plus 2 quantity squared gives me a negative 2, and the minus 1 at the end gives me still a minus 1. So again, you change the sign of the h part, and you leave the sign the same for the k part. For our next example, we'll convert 2x squared minus 12x plus 4 into vertex form. In the previous example, my leading coefficient was 1, but in this example, my leading coefficient is 2. So what I need to do first to complete the square is to factor the 2 out of the first two terms to give me 2 times the quantity x squared plus 6 plus 4. Remember that I only factored the 2 out of the first two terms. I left the constant term 4 exactly how it is. Now what I do from here is I'm going to complete the square of that inside quantity x squared minus 6x. Moving forward with that, I'll get 2 times x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 9 all plus 4. By simplifying the inside, I get 2 times the quantity x minus 3 squared minus 9, all plus 4. And then when I simplify, 
I get a final answer of 2 times the quantity x minus 3 squared minus 14. And there you have it. All I did was complete the square and I got my vertex form. Therefore, I can read off my vertex of positive 3 minus 14. In this next example, we're going to learn how to find the vertex of a quadratic function that is written in standard form without having to convert it to vertex form. The way to do that is to calculate negative b over 2a and then evaluate your function at the number that you just find. That will reveal our values for h and k, which will give us our vertex. Seems like a lot to remember, but it's not so bad. Let f of x equal to 3x squared minus 6x plus 12. To calculate h, I'll calculate negative b over 2a, which will be negative numerator of negative 6 over denominator of 2 times 3, which will simplify down to positive 1. And now I just feed positive 1 into my function to get that f of 1 is equal to 9. And that's all there is to it. You can then conclude that your vertex for this quadratic function is the point 1, 9. In this next set of examples, we'll start graphing quadratic functions. And we'll do so by examining x-intercepts and vertices. First, let f of x equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5. Notice that the leading coefficient of this quadratic function is positive 1, so I know that this parabola will be concave up. To find my x-intercepts, I'll set up the equation x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals to 0, and then I'll solve it. I solve it by factoring the quadratic into x minus 5 times x plus 1 equals 0, which has a solution set of x equals 5 and x equals negative 1. This will tell me that my x-intercepts are the points negative 1, 0, and 5, 0. Next, I'll go ahead and calculate my vertex. This is in standard form, so I can use the technique that we used last slide, where I compute h equals to negative b over 2a, and k, which is equal to f evaluated at h. These calculations give me that h is equal to positive 2, and that k is equal to negative 9, therefore my vertex is the point 2, negative 9, which I'll go ahead and plot right here, and then draw my parabola like so. So all we've done here is figured out if we're concave up or concave down, we found x-intercepts, in other words where we're crossing the x-axis, and we found the vertex, so we know the parabola's lowest point. Once you have that, you plot the points and then connect the dots. For our next example, we're going to graph g of x is equal to 2 times the quantity x plus 7 squared plus 8. Our front coefficient negative 2 here is of course negative, so that tells us that our parabola is going to be concave down. And since this is already in vertex form, we can go ahead and read off the vertex for free as the point negative 7, positive 8. Now all that's left to do is to find the x-intercepts, at which point we will set negative 2 times x plus 7 squared plus 8 is equal to 0. We solve this by first subtracting 8 from both sides to get the revised equation here. Then we divide both sides by negative 2 to get that x plus 7 squared is equal to 4. Since 4 is positive, we can take the square root of both sides to get x plus 7 equals plus or minus 2. So this gives us two equations to solve x plus 7 equal to negative 2, which implies that x is equal to negative 9, or x plus 7 is equal to positive 2, which implies that x is equal to negative 5. Those are our solution sets, so we have the points on our x-axis, negative 9, 0, and negative 5, 0. I'll plot those, and I'll go ahead and plot my vertex, negative 7, positive 8, and now I can go ahead and connect the dots, and we're done. When you're graphing parabolas, this is really all you need to do. It seems kind of like a bare bones drawing because a lot of it is kind of estimations and eyeballing, but that's really all you need since you have necessary information like your x-intercepts and your vertices because those are the points of information that you need to really classify what your parabola is. In this next example, we'll build functions. Suppose that we need to build a function that has a vertex 1, 2 and passes through the point 3, negative 2. This has a pretty standard process. What we'll actually do is use vertex form, input the information that we have, and then all we have to do is just solve for one unknown. Our vertex form, of course, is f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k, and we can go ahead and plug the information we have because we have our vertex. This gives us that f of x, after simplifying, equals to a times x minus 1 squared plus 2. The only thing missing here is a, so that's the only information that we need to find. And since we're given a point that this parabola goes through, we can use the point 3, negative 2 to help us figure this out. For 3, negative 2 to be a point in our function, we need the function value f of 3 to take on the value negative 2. Remember at the end of the day that a quadratic function is still a function. It takes an input and gives you an output. 
and the ordered pair, 3, negative 2, tells you what the correspondence between that input and that output have to be. So with this information, since we know what f of x looks like, we can set f of 3 equal to a times 3 minus 1 squared plus 2 is equal to negative 2. Again, this is coming from the fact that f of 3 has to be equal to negative 2 for the point 3, negative 2 to be present in our parabola. We can evaluate f of x at the point positive 3 and get the equation that looks like this. a times quantity 3 minus 1 squared plus 2 is equal to negative 2. When we simplify that, we find that 4a equals to negative 4, which means that a has to be equal to negative 1. And now that I have that information, I can go back to my original function f of x and substitute a for negative 1 to get that f of x has to be equal to negative quantity x minus 2 squared plus 2, and we're done. So we found exactly what we've been looking for, a function that has the vertex 1, 2, which f of x does, and passes to the point 3, negative 2. So really what we can take away from this is we really only need two pieces of data to build a parabola. We need its vertex, and we need a different point that the parabola passes through. Once you have that, you can build a function. Let's try again in another example. Let's build a function that has vertex negative 1, negative 4, and passes to the point 3, 0. Using the exact same process, we'll plug the information about our vertex into the vertex form to get that g of x should be equal to a times the quantity x plus 1 squared minus 4 after simplification. Since the parabola has to go to the point 3, 0, we know that g evaluated at 3 has to be equal to 0. So let's set up that equation. We'll say that g of 3 equal to a times 3 plus 1 squared minus 4 is equal to 0. And then just like before, we solve for a to get that a takes on the value 1 fourth. So we plug this in to our original function to get that g of x is equal to 1 fourth times the quantity x plus 1 squared minus 4. For our last example, suppose that two numbers sum to 6. What is their highest possible product? Now this problem seems kind of weird because it doesn't seem like we have a lot to go on. But we actually have just the right amount of information. We know that we have two numbers, or unknowns, that sum to 6, so let's make those unknowns x and y and set x plus y equal to 6. Now the next question is how do we work with their product x times y? You can't distill information from the equation x plus y equals 6 right off the cuff, but what I can actually do is I can solve for y in this equation to get that y has to be equal to 6 minus x. This is good because now I have a way of describing y. So I can go back to my product x times y and I can substitute y for 6 minus x to get that x times y is equal to 6 times x minus x squared. What I have now is a quadratic function in standard form. Notice that my coefficient of x squared is negative, so as a parabola, this would give me something that is concave down. Therefore, its vertex would be its highest point, and it turns out that the vertex is exactly what we need to solve this problem. Since the vertex is the highest point, it will reveal the largest possible product of x and y when x plus y have to sum to the number 6. So to figure this out, let's calculate the vertex. We have something in standard form, so our x-coordinate will be negative b over 2a, where b is equal to positive 6, since 6 is the coefficient of x to the first power, and when you simplify this information down, you get x equals to 3. Now that we know what x is, we can determine what y is, by saying that y has to be equal to 6 minus x, which in our case is y equals 6 minus 3, to find that y is equal to 3. Therefore, x times y is equal to 3 times 3, which comes out to be 9, and we're done.